video game emulation, where do I start? Um, let me take you on a, a bit of a, a journey. Back in 1995, kind of when the Amiga came out, um, there was an advert appeared in the back of a, a magazine and it was uh, advertising a Spectrum emulator. Now, I didn't know what that was. I knew what a Spectrum was, but I didn't know what an emulator was. Uh, and this thing boasted I could play Spectrum games on my Amiga. So, I sent off my £5 note, got a floppy disk, and what it allowed me to do was play Manic Miner and Jet Set Willy, albeit at probably half the speed. Now, over the intervening uh, 25 years, something like that, I'm not great at maths, emulation of video games has come on in leaps and bounds. You can now emulate, um, you can emulate most computers, there's very few computers you can't emulate. Um, and in particular arcade games through the wonder of a thing called MAME, which is Machine Arcade Machine Emulator. Um, yeah, that allows us to play classic video games from, you know, days gone by, going right back to things like Sub Hunt, Space Invaders, Pac-Man. Right up to more modern games like uh, Dodon, Patchy, and what have you. But uh, I uh, discovered this emulator, which I'm about to share with you, um, a few months ago. I knew I knew it existed, and I was uh, I was wanting to play Outrun 2, and I thought, well, I've got it on my Xbox 360, etc. And I googled it. And I found a video and this person was basically saying if you want to play the best version of Outrun 2, you really need to play the arcade game. So I thought to myself, well, how can I do that? Let's do a Google. And lo and behold, it turned up this emulator called Technoparrot. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see the front end of Technoparrot, a wee bit how to set up games, etc. And then I'm going to let you see some games. Um, if emulating um, pretty new, well I say new, games that are maybe 10 years old is your thing, then you don't want to miss this video. Hope you enjoy. Right, so here we go. Techno Parrot. Now, this does get frequent updates. Uh, I'm currently running the most up-to-date one, which was updated yesterday. Now, these are all the games uh, that I've got installed. Um, I think there's... There's over 200 games, I'm not quite sure exactly how many. Um, there are quite a few sort of similar games, um, different sort of versions of the same game. Most, I would say, are driving games, beat em ups and light gun games, because that's pretty much what any semi-modern game is going to be. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, let's go into game settings. When you first, uh, when you first get a game installed, you can go into settings. Now, what you need to do is the game ex executable, you need to go and drill to where that is. Now, it's not always obvious. Some of these executable files um, are not very obvious. It will be like an application. Um, so, you just have to kind of noodle about until you find it. Um, I've managed to get most of them working okay. Um, some of them are easier to find than others, but once you've done that, um, input, oh, just leave that. You can run it in a window, you can hide the cursor, there's there's various options. Sensitivity and what have you. So let's save that. Now the next thing you want to do is go in and set up your controller. Now you, you just click in the... Uh, in, the, in the, the line or the, the section and then you press what key you want. Now I tend to make, uh, I tend to put, most because these are arcade games, I tend to put like the test button as F1, service button F2, but you can put whatever you want. Um, most games will work, light gun games use the mouse uh, and non light gun games, beat em ups, shoot em ups, whatever it is you can use, uh, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. So, yeah, you just want to uh, configure all that. Uh, there we go. Light gun. Now, I find using, uh, although I've got a Logitech mouse, 
if you use a Logitech mouse, the cursor isn't in line with the crosshairs. So I've found picking the Windows mouse cursor works better. So again, just configure all. This game's a bit of a I don't know what the hell is this left jab, right hook, right uppercut, right. Uh, this isn't a game that I'm ever likely to play. I don't even know what this game is to be honest. It's just the first one that I picked. It's probably a bad example, but anyway, yeah, you go into into these controllers set up, and you set it up as best as you want it. Let's just press anything. I mean, driving. So it's got a light gun and it's got light fighting as well. Bloody hell, action deca. Never heard of it. If you go into that main sort of menu, you'll see there you've got, well, there's an update available. So let's just click on that. It's telling you there's a, whatever it is, just click update. It doesn't take very long and it will automatically uh, close down Techno Parrot and restart. In fact, I think it asks you if it wants you to do that, but it's very, very simple. But there are updates, I find, every couple of days. Now, I don't know who it is, but the guys that are behind Techno Parrot are very, very clever. There's a big group of them that work in this thing. Now, if you want to add a game, when you first get Techno Parrot, you need to add a game. Now, the games that are green are the ones that I've added. The ones that are black are ones, excuse me, are ones that I haven't added like that one. And let's just go back to the library of games. Now the Techno Parrot website, you can see there technoparrot.com. Um, yep, you can uh, download this. It's completely free. And the one, what you want to download is that one, TP Bootstrapper. So anyway, let's get to the meat and bones of this video and look at some games you can play. Kicking things off, this is a uh, light gun game, Alien Isolation, I think it's called. Sorry, Aliens Armageddon. Now, one of my friends uh, at the computer club, I, I was talking to him about this, and I was saying how impressive this was, and he says it's not as impressive as you think, because these games are effectively running on PCs, so it's fairly easy for a PC, a fairly modern PC, to emulate this. Now, graphics do look super impressive. For the purpose of this video, I can't obviously feature all 200 odd games, so I've picked, I don't know, about 20, something like that. I've just picked some of my favourites and, you know, others that kind of look pretty good. Now, most of them play absolutely fine. Um, some of them, you need to bear in mind again, this is an emulator, it's emulating arcade games. And some of these arcade games, I mean, they came out. I would say anywhere. Most of these games came out after like the year 2000. I think the most recent one was maybe five years old, something like that. Um, but they used modern technology, so some of the games, like in fact quite a lot of the games, especially driving games, they had the ability to network so you could have multiple machines connected up. So you need to bear that in mind when you're setting this up. But uh, listen, I could get it working, so you know, anyone that knows my technical ability would realise if I can get it working, anyone can. But uh, yeah, if you like your, sh your uh, light gun games, this is excellent. Now again, you're possibly thinking, well, wait a minute, main Meister, this is no better than my PlayStation 4. And you know what, you'd be absolutely right, but you're missing the point. You're absolutely missing the point. These games, this thing does not exist so you can play the best games ever. If you want a slice of arcade games made in the last 10 to 20 years, then this gives you it. 
Um, you need to bear in mind that these games are all pr probably quite short games to play. Um, they're going for the jugular, they're wanting to give you an instant thrill, so if playing these type of games is your thing, then you're going to love this. Now, I don't think any of the games that I've seen, that I've featured, um, ever got home release, so, you know, in some most cases, this, playing them through this is your only opportunity to play a game like that at home. So there we go. Right, next one. Batman. But visually, they do look damned impressive. This particular one, um, it would benefit from a, a steering wheel. I was using uh, an Xbox 360 analog stick, so it's a wee bit twitchy. I'm sure it, it would work much better with a, a steering wheel. But these games, they would have looked super impressive in the huge big screens that they were kind of put in in the arcades. Loading! Mm, they probably load. I would imagine they probably load as quick as they would in an arcade. You need to remember, because of their big games, it's running off a hard disk. I'm hosting a little soiree this evening, and I'd just love for you to be there. I promise it'll be a blast! <laughs> Batman, the Joker's men are transporting nuclear equipment into the city. I won't allow that, Commissioner. Sir, if it's not too much help, we're a bit on the I'll see what I can do. Now you'll see that I've gone for the, the classic 1960s uh, Batmobile. A nice little touch. You'll see that I'm driving all over the place like a madman. That's just because it's extra twitchy. But you can see how well this plays. I mean, my PC is far from uh, powerful. I have got quite a decent graphics card, to be fair, but like I say, my mate did reassure me that this should work pretty well in, you know, a machine that was probably put together in the last 10 years. Target removed. Two remaining. I do like this game. I'm not particularly mad in this particular game, but I think it's beautifully put together. I mean, the graphics are just, it's got really colourful, colourful graphics. Really kind of captures the essence of kind of a comic strip. Right, who knew there was a sequel to Chase HQ? Now, Chase HQ was, is one of the finest arcade racers from the, the 1980s. Yeah, instead of like uh, sort of pixel scaling or sprite scaling, uh, they've gone for a. Can you, is it cell shaded look? It does look nice. Is it better than the original? Of course it's not.
Yeehaw, baby! Yeah, I don't know why these games are never ported to the home systems. Is it because they think that people want they want more for their games now, possibly? Do people really want quick pick up and play arcade games like this? Nah, they're probably more interested in their Quality duty crafting uh, stuff. There you have it, Chase HQ2. Right, uh, I can't remember what this is called, it's Contra something another. Um, are we going to see the title? No, we're not. Take him out. Well, I'll be brutally honest. Um, out of all the games I kind of I've seen in this thing, I'm not overly convinced about this one. I'm not a massive fan of a. Uh, reboots of old 8-bit machines, or old, sorry, old 8-bit kind of uh, graphics, or 8-bit games I should say. I mean, uh, Contra came out a long time ago, um, and this, it's effectively the same game, but with enhanced visuals. Did I prefer this one to the original? Probably not. But then, what do I know? But it's nice to be able to play these. I mean, the chances of playing something like this in arcades is probably next to nil unless you live in uh, Japan. There we go from one classic to another. Darius Burst. in these games. What's this called? Let's just see, this is from 2011. Darius Burst Another Chronicle. The music for these games is always something else. So I'm going to shut up for a second. Yep, hide that That's <laughs> games, do you prefer this over the original? I'm not quite sure. I think it loses something when it kind of looks as good as this. Well, it 
is nice looking then. Because the music's beautiful. Now, I'm not a fan of uh, beat em ups per se, but I thought, <coughs> excuse me, I thought I'd let you see this anyway. I remember in video game uh, beat em ups had like six players to pick from, or even less now. Look, look what you've got here, I don't know, about 30 or something. There's one that looks like me. I'll apologise right now in advance for the absolute crap gaming skills. To really get the maximum enjoyment out of a sort of beat em up, you need to learn the buttons. You need to actually learn what you're doing, whereas I just mash buttons and there is no skill or enjoyment in doing that. You'll get to maybe level 3 or 4 doing that, but it's complete luck. Just a bit like what I've done there. I've beaten her and I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking, big man. Brad Wong versus Base. Now I think most of these uh, games, especially games like this, they probably they were probably they probably had like sit down hardware, um, you know, hydraulic hardware and that kind of stuff, which obviously enhanced the experience quite a lot. Pretty simplistic, but you know what? Fun to play.
I mean, something like this, it's... Yikes. Uh, it's, it's on reels, obviously. There's not an awful lot of interaction. You're moving across here about and shooting stuff. But, like I said, I'm sure this would have been enhanced with some sort of uh, hydraulic seat type shenanigan. Oh shit. Sliding on a piece of ice or something? It's realistic. Have that. Right, from one uh, one shooter to another one. This is what is this called? Far Cry something or other. It's obviously based on the uh, the Far Cry far, uh, franchise that was released for consoles. But again, this one is pure uh, light gun. Yeah, Far Cry Paradise Lost. This one is. As I mentioned earlier, these are sort of running off hard drives, so there can be a wee bit of a loading uh, delay. Now, out of all the ones that I've kind of featured in this video, I think this one is probably dated the worst. Um, I mean, I would probably say the visuals in this are Xbox 360. Again, you need to remember, it's an arcade game they're playing. So playing this in arcade, it would, you would, the experience would be enhanced because you have a proper kind of machine gun type thing, rather than a mouse. Shoot that deck chair. Fairly repetitive this one I think. Pretty much the same enemies, I don't know. There are, are obviously different levels, I don't know if it, you know, the actual the game changes or anything, I don't know. But again it's a good good fun for a ten minute blast.
Take that. Plenty of blood, which I like to see. So yeah, there you go, that's Far Cry, Far Cry Paradise Lost, I think it was. Right, H2 Overdrive. Time for some uh, on the water racing shenanigans. See, it says save your game, end up a pin. Some of these games you could use like credit cards and cards or mobile phones to save your game. Create a profile to start earning achievements and rise in rank. Sydney Opera House in the background or it's the Glasgow SECC. Quite like to look at this, it's not they're going for a kind of cartoony again cell shaded light. Can you look similar to uh JTH Q2? Sydney, Australia, apparently. I was wrong. That's the thing about arcade games nowadays, I mean, their arcade games are effectively finished. Um, you know, arcade arcades now compared to what they were back in the 80s are just crap. It's full of uh, gambling games and games where you win tickets. So the games, are actual video games that they put out now, they're usually on massive screens or they've got glorious visuals. Just, they want to try and attract the punter, get you to spend your money. Um, they're usually fairly simplistic, quite shallow, but it's all about getting a kind of thrill for a few minutes. one might be uh, familiar to a few people. Yeah, Mario Kart DX, yeah. Arcade GP DX, so they actually ported Mario Kart, I think it's Mario, based on Mario Kart 8 across the arcade. I don't know what the difference is between this and uh, the one on the, the Wii U and the Switch. Again, I think this machine, you can save your progress on a card or something. I don't think Pac-Man ever appeared in any of the uh, home versions. Now because these... Uh, these games are designed to take your money, the difficulty is obviously greater than a home version. Because they don't want you playing it for like hours on end. No idea what these are. Uh, 
I don't know what that thing is at the bottom. Is that a piece of meat or something? Don't know. But the home version of uh, Mario Kart e is fantastic. It's a great game. See there, it plays rather nice. <laughs> the imagination that goes into some Nintendo games is just fantastic. we go, that is Mario Kart Arcade GP DX. Right, this next one, um, I can't even remember the name of it to be honest with you, uh, Operation Ghost I think it's called. Now I would like to uh, give a big thank you to uh, Mr George Funky Spectrum, um, he very kindly gave me this version of the game. Now what uh, George has done he has uh, changed all the blue blood to red blood, so it looks much, much gory. And I think he's done a few other little uh, enhancements, um, which must have taken him absolute ages. So, massive thanks, George. I do appreciate it. George has also helped me uh, with a few other games. So, uh, And I know George is absolutely loving, uh, loving this emulator. Now, before I started recording this video, in fact, well, I'm talking absolute nonsense. Um, I've been recording this video now for probably the best part of three, four weeks. In the last couple of days, I've uh, picked up. It's a sensor that allows you to uh, use the Wii Remote. Apparently it's a light gun now, it's called a Mayflash wireless sensor dolphin bar. Um, I've not, I've tried it briefly, couldn't get it to work, but uh, I was talking to George and he's got the same one and he has managed to get it working, so I'm looking forward to giving that a go. Um, it would be nice to be able to play these games, you know, as a kind of light gun rather than using the mouse, but it's still enormous fun. 
use the most for these. Yeah, it looks great by the blood. <laughs> right, now this was the game that prompted me to download the simulator. Um, I was looking to play the best version of Outrun 2 and I did a bit of googling and uh, a few people said if you want the best version you need to get the arcade and uh, the arcade version and that's what prompted me to uh, download Techno Parrot and then the rest as you see is history. Now this game does look and play fantastically. One of my mates actually was telling me that apparently the hardware that this actually ran on in the arcades is not much more powerful than the original Xbox. Because the version on the Xbox, the original, I'm not talking about the Xbox 360, I'm talking about the original Xbox. The version in that is bloody fantastic. Yeah, this is a great game. It really is. It's just fun to play. I would say this is almost the perfect kind of update to the original Outrun. I mean, out, the original Outrun is absolutely phenomenal. Um, probably better than this, I would say, you know, from a nostalgia point of view. I mean, the original Outrun is just phenomenal. It's, it's you know, I would think it's definitely the best sprite-based uh, driving game. But uh, this is a lovely update. It obviously improves the visuals a lot, um, you know, more traffic and what have you. Uh, but yeah, great version. Out on two, right? Next one, this is Raiden Three. Now, this game uh, <laughs> plays on its side, it plays horizontally. So, the only way to play it um, is to rotate your monitor. It's because Techno Parrot does, can't rotate this game at the moment. Yes, yeah, so the only way to play it is to either lie on your side. Rotate your monitor, or else do what I did and uh, play it through OBS because you can rotate the screen. So I was playing it through OBS, and that way it was playing playing like it is here, vertical. That's a, a lovely take on uh, Raiden. Raiden's definitely one of the, the classic shmup uh, franchises. It's 
kind of uh, a cross between your standard shooter and a bullet hell. It's not quite bullet hell, um, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's rock hard to play, but it's got some nice uh, power ups, and uh, yeah, it's, it's great music as well. I'm a massive fan of the original uh, Raiden, Raiden games. This is, uh, I think this is Raiden 3, I said it was. Uh, it also supports Raiden 4, I think. Yeah, it's got some really, really nice kind of set pieces, some awesome kind of end of level uh, guardians. Lovely. Right, now I have deliberately uh, turned down the music in this bit. I know I'm probably going to get hit for a copyright strike um, with some other games, but I thought, you know, it's a blatant copyright strike with this one. This is uh, Star Wars Battle Pod. Now the visuals in this, I think, are really nice. Seeing that, the old, uh, what you call it, Star Wars games in the GameCube looked really, really nice. But this one does look the dog's bollocks. Yeah, it's worth it just for these X-Wing uh, screaming sound effects. Right, I'm not going to blank out this music because that would uh, take away a lot from the actual game experience. I mean, the original Star Wars arcade game is fantastic, but uh, this, this game takes a lot of beating as well. Everything moves that as well is uh, lovely. I mean, if you can squint your eyes, this could technically be the film, couldn't it? Yeah, it could, absolutely. Yeah, there you go, that's Star Wars Battle Pod. Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. 
world's fiercest fighters await. Will you be the last warrior standing? It's amazing how uh, the old Street Fighter 2 sort of world has evolved. I mean, there was, what, six characters to choose from now? There's about, I don't know, 30, something like that. I mean, this game is still absolutely massive. Which of these warriors will prove their strength to the world? Yeah! The battle of the century! Fight! I'll give it a shot! If you're a familiar uh, viewer of my channel, you'll know that I'm completely pants at uh, beat em ups. But it is a nice update to the sort of 2D version. The visuals do look really nice. I don't know what the sort of Street Fighter aficionados would make of this. Is this a better game than the original Street Fighter 2? What is deemed to be or generally regarded as the best Street Fighter? I'm really not too sure. I think like the more modern versions like this are what they use in uh, the sort of professional uh, competitions. Quite, crisis. quite an opening in the game. And you can see there you can also play as a Jedward. Or is he one of the, the baddies? I think he might be. If you don't know who Jedward are, uh, go and Google it. <laughs> Obviously the buttons, uh, left and right pedals, uh, you can assign them to whatever, I've got them assigned to a couple of keys in the keyboard. Now in this particular game, um, I couldn't actually enable the, the crosshair, so you can see there I'm, I'm kind of having to guess where I'm shooting. Reload. The only way you know where you are is when you actually fire and you see the little uh, gunshot. Reload. 
In the ankle, son. Better place to hide behind than this sofa. As I've said, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why some of these companies don't release these in some sort of compilation. You know, I'm sure they would sell. Warning. Now this is, uh, is it Tekken 7? I think it is. Looking at that, you can play like two player local, you can play online, um, and then you can practice. So I don't know if there's like any uh, artificial intelligence, I don't know if you can play like a one player game as such. Really not quite sure. I did like Tekken on the PlayStation, I have to admit. Again, I couldn't play for Toffee, but I did like it. I mean, it's stunning looking for its time. Get ready for the next battle, 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 battle. So yeah, I think the, the visuals for this are more uh, realistic looking, they've gone for a more kind of photorealistic look, whereas, uh, you know, Street Fighter 7 or whatever it is, 5, can't remember exactly, it still, it still tries to retain a cartoon look to it. But yeah, if you think I'm doing well, it's because uh, <laughs> the guy I'm fighting is uh, not fighting back. Yeah, there you go, that's Tekken 7. Oh, they're nice. Right, this is Under Defeat, which uh, it was actually ported to the Sega Dreamcast. Um, it actually, it was a game that came out, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago in the Sega Dreamcast. And uh, to be fair, the version in the, the Dreamcast is excellent. It's got an interesting kind of game mechanic. You know, if you move the joystick, your helicopter will kind of rotate either left or right or shooting straight up. And then when you press the fire button, it will kind of lock it in position. It's a lovely looking game. I think this is probably either one of few or if not the only game that's in Techno Parrot that uh, 
actually did have uh, did have its uh, a conversion to the home systems. But yeah, it's a really pretty looking game. Albeit difficult. Virtua Tennis 3 is also supported. Again, there were uh, conversions. I don't know if there's conversion to Virtua Tennis 4 enough, but there were numerous conversions of the Virtual Tennis games on, uh, I think, the PlayStation 2 and the Sega Dreamcast, and they were really good. Rafael Nadal. Probably the best tennis games, uh, tennis video games, apart from Match Point on the Spectrum, obviously. one of these games, tennis games, it's uh, easy to play and difficult to master, but once you get used to the controls, it's an absolute sublime game. Some of that. I have absolutely no idea how I managed that super power shot. I don't know where that came from. So yeah, that is excellent. Oh, look at the sweat in the doll. Right, I had to include this one. Now, if you're of a certain age, you may remember Wacky Races. It was a cartoon that was uh, shown in the UK back in the 70s. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen anything about this program um, for probably the best part of 40 years. Now, I'm not quite sure why the screen 
is displayed the way it is. Um, I don't know whether it was some kind of super wide monitor or something. I'm not quite sure. There's old Ant Hill Mob and Penem Penelope Pit Stop. Peter Perfect. It's an interesting license because, you know, anyone that's, uh, that wasn't born in the 70s probably wouldn't have a clue what this was. Now it's got a really nice kind of cell shaded look to it. I could only have imagined what it had been like as a kid thinking that one day you were going to actually be able to partake in the race. Now I'm wondering if I've got some sort of invulnerability turned on because you'll notice I've gone through a sign and a couple of uh, oil barrels. So I've maybe turned on some kind of cheat mode or something. Or maybe it's not properly emulated, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, if you've ever wanted to play the part of Dick Dastardly, then now's your chance. Right, the very last one folks, um, House of the Dead, this is another uh, light gun game, and this is really nice, this is excellent. Shotgun. If you've ever wanted to play the part of uh, Noel Gallagher from Oasis, or Flying Birds, or whatever the hell they're called, uh, then this is the game for you. There's no signal. Find anything good? Me There's our man, uh, Noel. I want to find out about the organization, but everybody just asks questions about me. What's that sound? <laughs> Oh shit. There's more to come. Run until you die. What so yeah, this is Techno Parrot folks. Um why would you want to play this? Well, yeah, the games are uh, are probably not going to last forever. Um they're probably going to be quite short games. But the you know, the games that this emulator supports are games that you're never ever going to get to play on home systems. Well, maybe one day um, Sagan, what have you, might decide to release it for home systems, but until then, you know, this this plays modern arcade games, and hopefully I've demonstrated how well a PC plays them, I mean, I've not got a particularly modern PC, my graphics card's not bad, but from all intents and purposes, um, a machine that's probably 10 years old would run this pretty well. Um, I absolutely love this, it's fantastic, I've spent a lot of time in the last two or three weeks uh, getting all these games. Now I've only showed you a very very small selection, I think I've showed you what, about 20 games? Um, and at time of, uh, sorry at the time of this video going out, 
there's over 200 games uh, supported. Like I said, if you want to play every game, then you have to uh, pay a fee. I pay £4.99 Patreon per month. That gives you access to another 30-odd games, and I think it's worth it. You know, these guys put in a hell of a lot of effort putting out stuff like this. I think this is absolutely brilliant. And yet yeah, the ROMs, you can uh, you can find them fairly easily. Just go to Google and do a search, and you'll find them. If you've got any questions about this emulator, guys, please just put your comment below, and I will endeavour to uh, help you. And as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you, as always, for watching. Until next time, see you later.